All right, so I've had to sit on this one for a week or two. Obviously, I'm not going to read press releases and articles, and I'm not going to quote Tony Khan. We know CM Punk is done with AEW. Now, for me, to, for someone who, who actually watched uh, Collision, in my opinion, and I'm not trying to piss off Impact fans, but in my opinion, Collision was the best wrestling show on TV. Uh, Dynamite, not so much. Dynamite is a train wreck, but Collision, to me, was the best show on TV, and now it's become Dynamite 2.0 uh, without the inclusion of CM Punk. So um, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the dude. I was... Uh, you know, he's one of the reasons I was able to kind of stick around and watch that product, which I think is getting progressively worse. But obviously he's gone there and, um, you know, the the chatter and the buzz amongst the faithful was that, well, he could come to impact. And I know Sean Ross Sapp, I saw where he said, I give it a 30 percent chance of happening. You know, there there has been reports in the past of Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, like 90% coming. And it didn't happen. And I can't, I, I'm having, I'm sorry, guys, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around him coming to Impact. I just am. If he did show up, I would be a big and shit. Trust me. I would love for him to. And I know Bound for Glory is in Chicago, but I think Survivor Series is too. You know, CM Punk is a huge star. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't done wrestling, to be honest. But I can't wrap my head around him coming to Impact. And I always say Impact will take the next step when they get the next Kurt Angle. But when I say that, I mean the guy who chooses Impact, not settles for Impact. Not, I got fired from you know everywhere else, and now I got to wrestle an impact. Someone who who comes in and like chooses impact, and that's going to be when they take their next step. So, could he? Man, I hate the phrase "never say never." I know, I know, people say that. Um, I think it's very, very played out, and I I hate quoting that. But I'm going to say, you know, never say never. I'm not going to say there's a 100% chance he is not going to show up. I just don't see it being a thing. I don't see who he works with. Because when CM Punk is doing a story with someone, an angle, there's going to be back and forth on the mic. There's going to be you know, joust, uh, ver verbal jousting, verbal roasting of, of one another. And I just don't see that dance partner for him, him and impact. And even if there's one, even if there's two, I just don't see enough. Now I know there was talk years ago, Chris Jericho coming in for six, I think seven figures, um, to do five matches or something. Could that happen? Yeah, that, that's a possibility. That, that very much could happen. Is he going to stick around if it were to happen and, and be here long term? Absolutely not. I just cannot see that being a thing. You know, if he's going to continue wrestling, I see him likely ending up in WWE. I hate to say it. Uh, I still wouldn't watch WWE. There's pretty much no one that you can sign there or, you know, or show up on that. No one can show up on that television show. You can't sign anyone that's going to make me start watching that again because I've I tried to watch Monday Night Raw about a month ago. I made it about 15 minutes through it. I was just like, this is just this is just bad. I can't do it. So would I love to see him in impact over WWE? Absolutely. But you know, we're talking finances here. They I just don't see them having the money to do it. And I know right away people like Anthem has money. They do have money. But what kind of revenue is impact bringing in where you're going to say, okay, well, I'm going to spend a million dollars to bring in CM Punk for five matches. What kind of venues are you running? What, you know, what opportunities out there do you have to recoup that money? Now, if he does some pay-per-views, can you do bigger arenas? Yeah, I guess so. But are, are we really recouping what we're putting into paying this guy? 
I don't think Impact should be throwing a million dollars at anybody. Of course, I don't know the financials, but you know, rumor on the rumor mill, they've they've been you know profitable for a few years, but they weren't for a long time. I don't see them having that kind of uh, profit margin where they can say, "Well, we're going to bring in CM Punk." Because then you have to bring in people to work with them, which is the problem. We saw this with the Good Brothers, which the Good Brothers are the drizzle shits. But you brought them in, and you had almost nobody to work with them. So then you had to start bringing in uh, the Briscoes, and you had to bring in the Bullet Club and um, Gorillas of Destiny. You start having to bring, you know, pay all these guys to come in from other or the other places to work with these guys because you didn't have anyone. You didn't build up anyone to work with them, and they ran your division. And I, I, looking at the roster, I know I just did an upload about working with Will Ospreay. Yeah, there's some guys you can work with Will Ospreay, but CM Punk? Man, that that's... I know people don't want to hear that. They want to hear, well, he's coming. Anthem has money. I mean, if you look at the impact pay structure, there's people at the bottom of the roster making their indie rate. And probably less in some cases. I, I could be totally wrong on that, but there's people making their indie rate, okay? And, you know, because they're going the exposure route. Well, there's exposure here. And, there, well, you know, the reason I say less is because, say, you go do an indie show for 200 bucks. Well, now you got your merch table. Um, you might even be wrestling locally, but you've got your merch table, and now you can make a few hundred more dollars for like impact. They pay you your indie rate, bring you out. Where's the opportunity to to scale that up? You know, they go the exposure route, and I know that the exposure has helped to more bookings and people being able to raise their price a little bit. I get that, but if you're paying people their indie rate at the bottom of the roster, you just cannot convince me that the money is available to pay a guy like CM Punk and then have to bring in guys to work with them. I just don't see it. Now, if you get on a bigger network, you again, you run a couple of venues that maybe have a thousand more people. You know, I don't know. I, I, I guess it's a possibility, but I don't see it being very realistic. I know Sean Ross Sapp is much more in the know than I will ever be. And he says a 30% chance. Like, I think it's a 5% chance. I just do. I would rather just see them start building. Um, their own stars up, you know, and we're expecting that some, that some firings in WWE are going to happen. We already know that people are being released behind the scenes. We don't know what effect that's going to have on the roster and impact is pretty good at bringing in some mid Carter dudes and finding something for them to do on their show. You know, they're, they're, that's, they're definitely good with that because you can be mid card in the WWE and you can get away with, wrestling in the main event scene for the most part in impact. And it's not a huge stretch, but if anything, I would just wait to see what names become available because Tony Khan really at this point cannot sign them all. I know we've been saying that for years, but at this point he really can't. I know he's got the ring of honor product and he's trying, he's got multiple shows, but the problem is you have three shows, but you've got the same people wrestling on all the damn shows. So, I would wait this out. I would see who could we bring in that we know is going to be good in the locker room uh, that can have good matches that we can potentially elevate. I mean, they're, they're going to, maybe they're going to find that next EC3. That's that guy who gets released from the NXT product that you don't really know. You can just completely revamp the dude. Uh, Steve Macklin, maybe you find that next Steve Macklin, you know, that might be on a lesser level than what they were able to do with EC3, but, I would just rather see them do that because me as an impact guy, those are, those are my two favorite wrestlers over the last, you know, damn near decade of Steve Macklin and EC3. Uh, you know, Rich Swan as well, but you know, he was still, he wasn't necessarily repackaged, but I'm just saying, you know, bring someone who has a basis to work with, with uh, the WWE training and make something of them. You know, I would just rather see that than let's chase CM Punk. Okay, yay, we got him. 
shit, who does he wrestle with? He wins a world title immediately. Who's on his level? Who could even beat him? You know, so, yeah, never say never, folks. I guess it's a possibility for a handful of matches, but I really just would not hold my breath on this.